in winter, 1606. A renowned Chinese scholar met daily with a Catholic missionary, not to discuss religion or Mandarin, but to translate Euclid's elements for the Chinese. The influence of that great collaboration is felt today, more than 400 years later. The priest was Matteo Ricci, an Italian Catholic best known as an intellectual. Father Ricci's work built a bridge that still stands today. Ricci was born October 6, 1552 into an upper-class Italian family in Mancata. His parents wanted him to study law and become a politician, but Ricci chose God over politics, and in 1571, against his father's wishes, Ricci moved to Rome and joined the Jesuits. In Rome, Ricci studied philosophy, mathematics and geography. He also learned astronomy and clockmaking, both of which played key roles in building the bridge with China. Young Ricci's imagination was captivated by the adventures of 16th century European explorers, in 1578, he embarked on a treacherous six-month voyage to Gower, India, where he spent four years studying theology. As soon as he finished his training, Ricci set sail for Macau. When Matteo arrived, Macau was the most important city in the Far East. At the time, it was a world trading centre and the hub for the four routes on the Marine Silk Road, Nagasaki, Manila, Lisbon via Gower, and Peru. After years studying Chinese in Macau, a language he was determined to learn, he received permission from the government to move from Macau to Gongzhou and build a church. Ricci introduced the Chinese to things they had never imagined. Mechanical clocks, western paintings and music, and most importantly, artifacts from science and technology. He also brought with him many religious objects previously unknown to the Chinese. And he was delighted when they swarmed the church to see his collections. But it was the chiming clocks that charmed the Chinese because they stood in such stark contrast to their hourglass. Another piece in Ricci's collection that intrigued the Chinese was his map of the world. The Chinese believed the sky was sphere and the earth was a square with China at its centre. They thought the world consisted of the 15 provinces of China plus a few nearby islands. Ricci's map stunned the Chinese because it depicted the whole world and China appeared small. But Ricci was respectful to his host country. Understanding the sense of superiority the Chinese felt, he placed China at the centre of his map. Ricci was also clever. He painted many exotic animals on the map, animals he knew the Chinese had never seen, such as the sea lion. And he included notes indicating that Europe was affluent. The map challenged long-held traditional Chinese views of the world and made its people want to know more. Ricci could never have anticipated the impact of his gifts in bridging the East with the West. The map, clocks and later the clavichord turned out to be crucial to Ricci's efforts to reach the Forbidden City and engage the Emperor. One of the clocks was installed to a special bell tower and the other became Emperor Wan Li's favourite toy. The Chinese had never seen a clavichord and of course did not know how to play it, so the emperor enlisted Ricci to develop a chamber music ensemble. And the clocks, well, they needed frequent maintenance and the ensemble frequent rehearsal, so Ricci was able to visit the imperial palace often. He was the first westerner ever to be invited into the Forbidden City. When Father Ricci passed away on May 11th, 1610, Emperor Wan Li ordered his tomb to be located in a Beijing cemetery, an honour never granted before to a Westerner. To the Chinese people, Matteo Ricci was much more than a priest. Among his enduring works are astronomy, the calendar, mathematics, geography, linguistics, art, music and the translation of Confucius writings. He was the architect of the first intellectual bridge between the Eastern and Western worlds. To Seattle University, Matteo Ricci reminds us to engage the world in meaningful collaboration through building our own bridges. Father Ricci represented the very best in Jesuit education and the intellectual life, and we here at Matteo Ricci College seek to emulate his best qualities, lifelong learning and service to others.